a 59-year-old Caucasian male was diagnosed with a moderately differentiated adenocarcinoma of the ascending colon and underwent a right hemicolectomy and lymphadenectomy in October 1999. The tumor was classified as PT3PN2M0, grade 3, and grouped as UICC. Stage 3. Standard adjuvant treatment with 5-FU and folinic acid was initiated within two weeks after surgery. 5-FU, 425 mg per square meter, and folinic acid, 20 mg per square meter, were given as an LV bolus on days 1-5. to five. The inpatient treatment was initially tolerated well and he was discharged. After the last application of the first treatment cycle on October 29, 1999 on November 3 he presented with severe stomatitis and dysphagia and had to be readmitted to the hospital during the first two weeks of this long-term hospitalization, the patient's condition worsened. Progressively the stomatitis did not improve despite local therapy. He developed severe bone marrow depression with peripheral pancytopenia due to febrile leukopenia with temperatures up to 39.3 degrees Celsius on November 6. Treatment with antibiotics and granulocyte colony stimulating factor was initiated. The further course was complicated due to pneumonia, repeated aspiration and respiratory insufficiency requiring mechanical ventilation. Furthermore he developed left cardiac insufficiency of unknown etiology after gradual improvement, the patient left the intensive care unit and was discharged in good condition on December 21. No further adjuvant. Chemotherapy was administered, and the patient was followed closely. The severe toxicity observed during the first cycle of standard 5 foo treatment rose suspicion of a defect in drug metabolism as we expected a hereditary genetic defect, pun, and pinmidine metabolites and DP activity were determined in urine and plasma of the patient and his healthy son according to methods previously described 9, table 1. Uracil and uric acid were mildly elevated in plasma samples of the patient, whereas thymine, 5-O-methyluracil, hypoxanthine, and xanthine were within the normal range, datum not shown. DPD activity was present in mononuclear cells of the patient, but was decreased compared to that of healthy controls. N equals 21, and was comparable to the DPD activity. Observed in obligate heterozygote individuals, N equals 13. The sun had decreased DPD activity in mononuclear cells as well, which was comparable to obligate heterozygotes. Based on these findings, both father and son were diagnosed of having a hereditary form of partial DPD deficiency. In February 2000 the patient was complaining of fatigue and abdominal pain. A CT scan revealed metachronous inoperable liver metastases, confirmed by a significant rise in serum CEA. In order to avoid the further administration of fluoropin mittens, we suggested palliative treatment with single-agent lnatecan, which was then safely administered over three consecutive cycles at a dose of 125 mg m2 as a 30-minute I.V infusion on days 1, 8, 15, 22. Every six weeks concomitant medication included ondanstrin, atropine, and lopiramide. No severe or unexpected side effects were observed during the course of treatment, only mild diarrhea, common toxicity criteria. CTC, grade 1, nausea, CTC grade 1, and abdominal cramping, CTC grade 1, did occur when the liver. Metastases did increase in number and size after the Third treatment cycle, we offered further palliation with single agent oxaplatin, given at a dose of 85 mg m as a 120 minute infusion every two weeks. Concomitant medication consisted of ondanstrin and metoclopramide. The patient was treated with this agent over 12 weeks. Nausea, CTC grade 1, paresthesia of the fingertips, CTC grade 1, and cold dysesthesia, CTC grade 1, were observed as expected mild and fully reversible side effects. When re-evaluated with sepskin at week 12, the liver metastases had progressed further with a significant increase in size the highly motivated patient, still in good condition, was then started on treatment with Raltitrix at a dose of 3 mg per square meter, given every two weeks, which was given without severe toxicity. The latest evaluation of response indicates disease progression in the liver after six cycles.